Hi, I'm Mia McCormick, and I'm excited to introduce you to today's influencer, Katrine Eisman. She's the chair of the Masters of Digital Photography Department at the School of Visual Arts in New York. Katrine, thank you for joining us. Mia, it's a pleasure to be here. So aside from being an author and an instructor, tell us a little bit about the direction of your creative work. My creative work is all about ex exploration and experimentation. And I really try to concentrate on seeing and photographing the things that I think other people overlook. All right, I love seeing the details. I'm known for photographing a lot of dead things because there's a real beauty in that because it's a cycle, part of the cycle of life. And I want to photograph the things the way I see them. So it, for me, it's all about exploration and experimentation. What type of projects excite you? What's excited me now for the last two or three years is I've uh, had the opportunity to go to Cuba three times. And I'm going again in November. And it's exciting, of course, because of the change that Cuba's going through, but it's also, it's a fabulous place just to walk around and take pictures. And uh, people are very open, of course, it's very beautiful. And I, I contrast that to like sometimes being in New York City where like everybody has a camera and as soon as you put your phone up, people are like, don't take my picture. So I'm looking forward to going back to Cuba and photographing again. What's changed in the industry since you started your career? Well, the most obvious thing is that I started with film in the dark room and then embraced digital very, very early on. I mean, so early on that it was uh, incredibly cumbersome, heavy, expensive, and the results were truly bad. And so the greatest change now is the quality of the equipment, the quality and the ease of use. I mean, you would literally would have to try to like miss an exposure or miss focus. They're taking care of the technical so you can concentrate on composition, creativity, and exploring. The technical used to be such a challenging part of photography, so what do you think is the most challenging thing for students today? I think the most challenging thing for students today is uh, finding their voice. We're surrounded by images, we see images, and we see people on Instagram that have, you know, 11,000, 12,000, 50,000 followers, and each picture gets, I don't know, 500 likes. And like, that would be so great. And so you have a tendency of seeing the same images over and over again, because they're safe. And it's a real challenge for, for an artist and for a photographer to like break away from that noise and try something new and explore and express what they really think. What are some ways that you encourage people to do that? Well, one thing um, I encourage and I do myself is you've got to photograph every single day. And it's that's, well, photography is a craft. I mean, as I raise my hands, it's a, it's a craft. You do it, you practice your vision, you practice composition and you can get better by doing it every day. And there's some people like, oh, I don't feel like shooting, or I'm not inspired. And it's like every photo teacher will tell you the same thing. You have to shoot through it. And you also have to be looking at a lot of work. Go to a magazine store or a library and get lost for a few hours. You know, go to the galleries, go to the museums, watch a movie multiple times. A lot of people have that little voice in their head oh, this is stupid, oh, this has been done before, oh, why are you doing this? You should get a real job. And that voice is only good when you're like standing on the edge of a cliff, because it's telling you, don't jump. But in terms of photography, that voice is not gonna help you. Just do it, do it, do it. Because every time you take a picture, you're learning for the next picture. So shooting is the only way to get over that voice. Because I feel like discouragement and not feeling validated with your own work is probably a huge problem for everyone. It is, and photography is very personal, but it's going to show you how you see the world. So there's, there's the photography, there's the digital time, there's the computer time, and sometimes having a little break between the two is a good thing. What about people who think of photography just in, you know, there's this whole idea of phone-based photography, right? Everybody's taking images with their phone, and people think that's kind of where it's moving. What do you think about that? Well, in all honesty, I think it's great that people have a camera with them everywhere they go now. There's pluses and minuses, but interestingly enough, in photography now, I feel that the innovation in photography is all in the small camera market. It's the phones, it's the mobile cameras, it's the drone cameras, it's the 3D cameras. And I think that people really need to keep up with where is the innovation taking place. But what impact do you think that has on the creative process? First of all, there's no more excuse. When the equipment was heavy and cumbersome, my pictures were always closer and closer to the car. So with these smaller cameras, be it like the good small point and shoots, 
the cell phone cameras, the action cams, there's no excuse anymore. So that's a great thing, you always have a camera with you. And I've noticed that when I have a camera with me, I see the world more clearly. What do you mean? Well, because I have to challenge myself to like look at the world, frame it, what, decide what's gonna be out of the frame, what's in the frame. I have to decide why am I taking that picture? And that's a, in a way, it's like a heightened consciousness of I'm here now, engaging in the world through photography. When you take a picture, you're really taking a picture of yourself. You're taking a picture of what you see, what you think is important. You know, what are you interested in? What do you want to see? What do you want to experience? And photography lets you do that. How did you come to that? How did you find your perspective? Well, I think that's a good question. I found my perspective in my undergraduate studies where I studied both politics and philosophy. And both of those fields, you do a lot of reading, you ask a lot of questions. And photography also lets you ask questions about identity, lets you ask questions about current events, history, the environment. And so if you ask questions, I'm just using a camera to answer those questions. You still teach fine art photography. How do you do that to a Snapchat generation? Well, I, am, I embrace what they're doing. I think it's great that they're communicating with images. And so what we want to do is get them to understand how important it is what they're doing and what they're sharing and what they're seeing and how they're learning how to read the images. So I don't judge. I build from it. And then rather than having the images, let's say, disappear in a minute, I try to like let them move on into developing a body of work, developing a story, being a storyteller. I'm specifically curious about the creative voice of females in the industry. How do you think that's changed? Well, I think it's changed. Uh, one thing is there's a lot of female bloggers. And they have these the great blogs and resources, and women are drawn to that, and they're, they're reading and they're being inspired by that. Now, you think mostly photographers, you think like, you know, sports and action, photojournalism, that that's mainly men, which isn't necessarily the case. There's a lot of great women working in those fields. But where you do see a lot of women in the influencing uh, phase are their editors, their decision makers, their retouchers, their art directors. And so photography is a bigger field than the person holding the camera. And there's a lot of women working all throughout the industry. So where I'd really like to see more women is on the presentation stage. Um, you go to tech conferences, photo conferences, and there's not enough women um, presenting and teaching. And it's very important for people to see their role models live. Why do you think that is? What's the challenge there? I think the challenge is, uh, oh, I can only speak from the American experience. I think it has to do with society. I think that in the business world, uh, women are still interrupted. Their ideas aren't as well respected. They're not listened to. Men take credit for their ideas. And you see that it, uh, it's infiltrated the classroom and uh, the business world. And so people take it for granted that men are gonna be the speakers. And it's a real challenge for women to find that voice. It has to do with women having confidence and being given the opportunity to speak. And that starts in the classroom, even in elementary school. And in the department that I chair, it's a college level uh, class, we, in, we make the people, we make everyone get up and present themselves, their thesis projects, present about other photographers, and you've gotta just get over that. I mean, because if you're a photographer, let's say you're working on set, the photographer is the key. They have to have the energy and the oversight to manage a big shoot. And you have to have the confidence to say, this is good work, and to get it out there. And then you have better have the confidence to understand business and marketing and value your own work. You cannot work for free. Find your voice. Have confidence. Find role models that you can really pattern yourself after. And the internet really helps with that. And the thing with photography is you have to do it again and again and again. What's interesting is you can have a great idea. This is a great idea. And then you photograph it and it's like, oh, that was really terrible. But, but that's okay. Exactly. You've learned from what you just did. And build a community. All right. I think it's very important, especially for women, to build a community, to be supportive, not see other women as competitors. So what resources would you recommend for young women today? Well, you'd want to look at local resources. There's professional organizations, um, ASMP, APA, PPA. There's also the New York Times Lens blog. There's Lens Culture. 
there's a feature shoot, uh, there's Enfoco, which is a, a great blog that people should be aware of, but you should also develop your own community with other women, other photographers, do a photo uh, meetup, go to workshops, go on a photo walk with other people. Photography doesn't have to be an isolated, lonely, solo hobby. It's really about sharing, talking, and expanding how you see the world.